Hi everyone, let's now compare the classical model to the Keynesian model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Keynes fundamentally disagreed with the classical model and its assumptions especially. He said this whole short run, long run difference is complete rubbish, doesn't exist in the real economy. He talked about wages being variable in the long term as a crazy assumption and therefore he came up with a very different idea of aggregate supply and a very different idea of macroeconomic management in the economy. Uh, first of all, he talked about aggregate supply not being different in the short run and the long run. He just said aggregate supply is aggregate supply full stop and it looks like this. It's determined by the level of spare capacity in the economy. So he did agree that there comes a point in the economy where production cannot increase uh, sustainably, and that is the full employment level of output, which represents the same idea in the classical model, which is maximum use of all factors of production in the economy at sustainable levels. And he agrees there comes a point at one output level where the economy can't move beyond that um, sustainably, and that's the full employment level of output. So there is a point where the long run aggregate supply curve becomes vertical, but he uh, argues that it's not always vertical. No way. There are times where it can be horizontal as well, which represents a point in time where there is so much spare capacity in a recession, for example. In which case, uh, an economy can be stuck uh, way, way less than full employment uh, and therefore needs some sort of uh, macro management, needs some sort of policies to actually get back to full employment. The economy will not self-heal itself back to YFE. He also argues that when there is lots of spare capacity, uh, output can increase without any inflationary pressure at all, which is why this curve can be horizontal. And that's simply because during periods of lots of spare capacity, when output increases, there isn't much pressure put on resources, on factors of production. Therefore, the price of those resources doesn't have to rise, in which case there might not be any inflation as output increases at all, which is why the curve can be horizontal as well. So his fundamental disagreements come with this notion of short run and long run. The fact that wages change in the long run and become variable, and the classical economists believe that when that happens, the economy will self-heal. Keynes says no, that's a terrible assumption to make because workers do not like to especially reduce their wages in a period of recession. And he said in recession, this is where my major problem exists, workers don't revise down their wage expectations. Who likes to take a pay cut? Nobody. In his terminology, wages are sticky going downwards. Workers are very resistant to a pay cut. In which case, if you wait for the long run, you wait for wages to reduce, for the economy to self-heal, well then, as you keep waiting for that long run, we'll all be dead, using Keynes' terminology right there. That's exactly what he said. He said, well, you're going to keep waiting, 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 waiting. And the problem is, as you're waiting, we're going to be suffering as an economy with very high levels of unemployment and all the social unrest and problems that that can bring. In which case, you wait for wages to adjust downwards, we'll all be dead by the time that happens. And he said that during the Great Depression in the late 1920s and early 1930s, when politicians were very much following a classical school of thought, waiting for wages to revise downwards and for the economy to self-heal. There was no evidence of that taking place. Uh, and this, was, uh, this is what fueled Keynesian argument. This is what fueled Keynes to come up with this general theory and to say, no, let me revise what aggregate supply looks like and therefore let me come up with a new theory. And basically he said, in periods of recession, so over here, where output in the economy is way less than the full employment level of output, known as a deflationary or recessionary gap in the Keynesian model, so a deflationary or a recessionary gap. Keynes argued that that could well be a long-run equilibrium. That doesn't just have to be a short-term equilibrium, like the classical economists would argue. That could well be a long-term equilibrium. Why? Because wages don't adjust, he said. Wages are sticky downwards. We're not going to see a, revised down, uh, a revision downwards of wages at all. We could be stuck there for the long term, in which case the economy is going to suffer from mass unemployment. It's going to suffer from unrest and the social issues that that can bring. Therefore, he said, what we need is not to wait. Right? Waiting will just lead to more problems. He says we need active.
active demand side management in the economy. Policies that will increase aggregate demand, that will move the economy closer to our full employment levels of output. And he said, in a recession, the easiest way to do that, the most direct way to do that, is to use active fiscal policy. An increase in government spending and a reduction in income tax or corporation tax to increase aggregate demand to take us closer to YFE, basically to do something like that. And he said, if that means borrowing money, if the government has to borrow, then so be it, because in times of boom, that money will come back to the government with higher tax revenue collection and lower uh, government spending necessary. So he says, yeah, fair enough, take uh, a budget deficit in that year, accept borrowing, accept the PSNCR, whatever, do so um, to increase aggregate demand. That's necessary, otherwise we'll be stuck here and the economy will suffer. Now, it's no surprise that politicians like this idea, like this theory very much, because it promoted a greater role for government. It meant that governments could increase in size. Um, it also meant that if it worked, politicians can you know, very much you know, target the fact that they got involved and use that as a great way to actually uh, gain popularity. So politicians liked it for that reason too. But also, it was a, a nice theory for politicians to follow because it meant that maybe they could increase AD without much inflationary pressure according to Keynes, which again meant that they can achieve their macroeconomic objectives without the conflict of inflation that normally would come about from an increase in AD. So it's no surprise that in the, during the Great Depression this became quite a, quite a successful theory, quite a, a popular theory to adopt for those reasons there. And um, it takes away the major issue of the classical model, the major limitation, which is, well, when is the long run? When does the long run occur? There is no time frame put on it. When do wages become variable, if they become variable? It takes away that limitation and directly the economy can, can uh, move towards full employment levels of output. All right, so that's the Keynesian model there, taking away the major limitations of wages, the assumption of wages, how they become variable in the long term in the classical model. Hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching. See you next time.